You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. 7 Minutes has grown so quickly, and we couldn't do this without you. So please, keep visiting our website at 7minutestoriespod.com, keep sharing your favorite episodes on social media, and of course, keep subscribing and leaving those rad ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts. Now, on to the story. This episode, Me and Gary V. This is a story about the day that I thought Gary V followed me. Gary Vaynerchuk, he's a CEO, entrepreneur, speaker. He's like a content marketing mogul. He's all over the digital social platform. So if you don't know about him, look him up because you got to know it to have context to this story. But see, this story goes back way back. I mean, back when I was six years old, that's when it starts. And what I mean by that is when I was six, my parents had just gotten a divorce. And I remember I was splitting time between my mom's house and my dad's house. And it was hard. I don't remember specifically how I felt, but I just knew that it was hard for me. And I remember being at my dad's apartment and he was trying to get his life back on track. And we just moved in to this empty space. You know how, when you move into new spaces that are completely empty and you're trying to fill them in with what it could be. And I remember sitting in this my, my bedroom alone. And in the middle of it was a gift that someone had given me. I don't remember who, but it was a Fisher price karaoke radio set. It was like a toy. They were popular in the nineties, but what was cool is yeah, you could do karaoke, but I wasn't interested in that. I love that. I could press record and then I could listen back to myself on this cassette. And secretly, I thought, too, maybe there was like this radio frequency in the Fisher-Price microphone thing that that maybe it went out into outer space and that, I don't know, some kid across the world would listen to it, too, and he'd be better off for it. Regardless of why, the reason why I'm giving you this context is to tell you that's why I started telling stories, because I love them. I love telling them, and I love the way they made the people I cared about feel, and maybe even the people I don't know. I liked how it made them feel. So flash forward just to a few days ago, and I'm doing my seven minute stories podcast, and I'm 35 years old, and I'm still operating under that premise. That's what I found in all my storytelling on. That seed, that purity of just doing it because I want to tell stories, But there was a moment of weakness that I had that could have veered me in a different direction. Here's what happened. I was on Instagram and I had just posted something, but then in my feed, something from Gary Vay came up and I was like, oh, I I like his content. That's why I follow him. I think it's interesting. It challenges me. There's some things I agree with or I don't agree with, but either way, he he's honest. And I think what he creates for me, at least there's a, there's a value to it. And so he had posted something and I commented on it, just affirming that I thought it was a great post. And I left the phone alone. Next thing I know, I get all these notifications. And one of the notifications said that Gary V liked your comment. And that felt great. Everybody likes to be liked. It's normal. It's human. No one wants to be last on the kickball team when you get picked. That felt great. That's where it should have ended. But then next, something happened that I couldn't even explain. I I started getting a few followers, probably from that comment. And then there was a notification that came up and said that Gary V is following you. I was like, holy shit. I didn't even take two seconds to double check with my eyes. And I'm already texting my best friend, Anthony, and I'm telling him, hey, you will not believe this. Gary V is following me. I got the whole press release set up. I'm already foreseeing a future that, that Gary V and I are having major conferences around the country. It was ridiculous. I mean, it's not ridiculous to be excited. That's normal. But I just went down this rabbit hole where I felt super validated because of that. Now, while it would be great if Gary V followed me, and that has a value, I got to call myself out because in that moment, I lost perspective. I don't tell stories for Gary V to follow me. 
I tell stories for the people that listen to me every single week. I tell stories to a small but growing loyal following every week. I tell stories for you. And I let myself go down this headspace of sort of feeling this blue check mark validation. That somehow it all made sense because of this. Because Gary V followed me, supposedly. Well, then I got a rude awakening because my friend Anthony texts me and he's like, hey, I'm looking at your followers list and I don't see that Gary V follows you. And I'm scrolling too furiously going, oh my God, he doesn't. Maybe I just imagined it. I don't think so. Maybe by accident they followed and unfollowed me. I don't know. Most likely there's a lot of bots on Instagram that impersonate influencers and all that kind of stuff. And through some sort of random hashtag or whatever, maybe in my feed, I saw someone who is Gary V, but not really Gary V follow me. I don't know what it was, but the end result is that the dude doesn't follow me. Why aren't I reacting that way when some guy from Idaho follows me with 50 followers that I don't know? I should be jumping for joy with the same amount of enthusiasm, the same amount of enthusiasm or more than I did when I thought Gary V followed me. Shame on me for that. That's who I started telling stories for. That's what it means to grow an audience authentic, authentically. You know, sometimes in this digital age, when you have your entrepreneur hat on, when you have your artist as entrepreneur, a creative hat, you, you don't think clearly sometimes. That's human. And I'm human. But in this world of blue check marks and influencers, it can be difficult. My way of setting it right is to tell a story about it and to set myself straight. Even if I veer off for 15 minutes, that's 15 minutes wasted on a, on a thought process that I don't need in my life. You know who knows better? And this is the person I check in with all the time. It's my six-year-old self. It's that lonely kid in an apartment outside of Cleveland wanting his parents to get back together, turning on a little Fisher-Price radio, pressing record, and putting his story out into the world. That's who knows better. I'm going to stick with that person. I can promise you that. This is about just me and you. Thank you for listening wherever you are. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks to our new partners at Evergreen Podcasts and the rest of our team. Audio production by Ken Went, original art by Pete Whitehead, and I'm Corey Burse. Remember, a new story comes out every Thursday evening. Perfect for listening then or on your Friday morning commute. Also, did you guys know we now have super cool shirts available? You can purchase yours at 7minutestoriespod.com. I love mine. It's super comfy. You should probably get one too. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>